Hi guys. Hey. Hello. <laughs> how are you doing? Really good. good. Yeah, yeah, we're good. good. Yeah, how, how are you feeling with second, the second season of Sega Ola just on the, on the horizon? Uh, listen, it's fun. We're, we're, uh, we're happy that the CRTC and the Quebec government let us do it. Uh, <laughs> they were going to shut you down? They were shut us down. They, they always try to shut Sam down. Always. They yeah. always, but it's never going to happen. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, we're, we're really excited, you know, um, we worked hard on season two and uh, we had so much fun doing it, so much fun writing it and I feel like it comes across on the screen and, and, uh, and we got more experience, you know, this year than, uh, than we did last year in every which way. So now we have this shorthand when, when we speak on the set and when Simon tells me to stop goofing around and uh, when the rest... Which is quite often. Which is quite which is every single minute. Yeah. And uh, with the rest of the crew, you know, we have such an amazing crew and the results are always great because, uh, because of our team. We have an incredible team. So. Talk, talk a bit about your thoughts on, like, you know, this is really, we, it's kind of historic. I mean, it hasn't really happened before to have someone like Sammy starring in a series here and the public really liked it. Didn't seem to be at all hung up on that fact. What do you think about the fact that it did so well, even though it's quite unusual. Well, I think as a country, we're I think we're there. I think it's the new reality of you know of of, of, of the population, and I think people are. I don't know. We have we with this show, we have the confirmation that people are ready for for this. <laughs> for no, where have we come as a society? Where have we ended up when this is what we're ready for? Yeah. Didn't someone say <laughs> if the future of Quebec is Sugar Sammy, then Quebec has no future? Yes. <laughs> Hello, Mathieu Bocoté. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but I, I think you know what I, I go. Uh, sometimes I go with Sam in, in NDG or going more English uh, Montreal, and people, some people recognize me, and they talk to me about the show that they've never listened to a French show before, and they watch our show. And it's it's a great feeling. It's a yeah. great feeling. I think for a long time there was an argument, and I remember it used to it used to bother me when when, when there were a lot of people who would write about like sociologists or or, or or people in the media who'd say, you know, Anglophones aren't embracing Quebec culture. They're not. They don't know who the Quebec stars are and the Quebec TV shows, and they don't know all. The, uh, and the argument for me was always like, you know, give them something they can relate to, and then they they'll they'll get you know they'll get there. And for for us, I think that's one of the sources of pride. For, uh, uh, of our for our show, it's like uh, we find it's the first time that anglophones and allophones are watching something on French television, and it's amazing, you know. Besides hockey, and we we actually ha have a great time with that. Yeah, it's true. We were walking down the street, and I think Simon's probably one of the most recognized Quebecois stars on the Anglo side right now. It's pretty amazing because I, I mean I I've often talked to Pierre Hood who, from RDS, and he's like, it used to be he was the only guy. Um, but is it also, I mean, in a way it seemed to me that often enough it's the industry is reluctant to take chances on a different kind of movie or a different kind of show, but the public's maybe more open than we think. And you know what? There is some English in our show, but it's not mostly English. It's mostly French. So there is English people, English-speaking English people that watch our show even though 90% of, of it is in French, but they have... Uh, they, they have Sam to relate to, and they have something to relate to, and then they just make the effort to, to understand the rest of the show. Yeah, and I find it's, it's also become a reality, I think, these days. A friendship between a guy like Simone and a guy like me is not something that's unusual in Montreal. It's probably the reality. I think a lot of people always say, you know, the, that artists influence society, and I think most of the time I feel like we reflect what's going on out there more than we influence it. You know, I feel like that's this is a reflection of what's going on in Montreal right now and in the rest of Quebec soon. You're going to see these kind of friendships and these kind of relationships develop without it being an issue, without even it being you know something that's that, that's talked about. I mean, right now it's considered unusual, but at some point I think it'll be like it'll be normal, you know? Yeah, and I made many friends on internet that are in ISIS. What's it, what is that? <laughs> I'm not sure what it is, but they're very nice. They want me to come over there so to, to see them. <laughs> Maybe you want to stay here. Maybe I want to stay here. But still, I mean, it's, very, it's really nice to have, seriously, on Facebook, there are some English people writing to me, and they want to be my friend, and I, they, but I have no time, but that, that's another problem. You know, in the show, the characters are Sammy and, and Simon. How close is what we see? I mean, I know it's a fiction, obviously, but how close is it to your own lives? I think the friendship is real. I think the friendship 
on screen. You see that, that how tight we are on screen. I think in real life, that's I mean, it's pretty much defines the I way. Thought, I thought it was the only thing that wasn't real. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I think the friendship is real. I think the the situations always come from a real place, and then they they grow into you know this exaggerated fiction that makes uh, that makes it funny. You know, we have to always go find the funny within it. But the, but a lot of situations are actually based on real situations we we've lived, and we always you know we'll, as soon as we start writing, we come in with ideas because we've lived a few things, and we're like, okay, well we should write this. Let's start writing, and then we you know we start putting the outline together, and then and then we go. How, how different is uh, season two for, for people who've seen the first one? Does things change much? I mean, is there a different feel to it? I think Sam is closer to, closer to being an adult. and he is, that, is that possible? He, it's, you know, he's not there yet. He's about at 16, maybe, mentally. <laughs> but it's still, it's a lot better than season one. And Simon tries to be more assertive and tries to just take, take his place more in society, which is good for him. Yeah, so I think, you know, I think both guys try to grow up a little more and I think the the humor is going to come in the attempt you'll see it with within the attempt of these two guys trying to become adults for the first time trying to grow up trying to be different trying to evolve I think that's fun and I mean I, I, you know in real life I think that's what people do you know they try to better themselves as much as they can I mean that's I think that's where growth happens and people try to grow and sometimes just trying is where the funny comes in how, how has it been for you, Sam? Because this is something really different for you. I mean, to do a scripted show, I'm wondering, does it impact on the other things that you're doing, like as a stand-up comic, which is kind of your day job or your night job? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it definitely helps. You know, like a lot of people who are new fans of the show come and watch the comedy show. They're like, oh, i got to come and see this guy live, and vice versa. A lot of my fans who are my fans because of my stand-up, that fan base, you know, immediately didn't even question went to see the show right away uh, you know watch the show right away and and became fans of the the TV show so so it, it all it all helps each other you know it becomes uh, it becomes uh, something fun and you know I think the live show and the the scripted show go well together you know it's a, it's fun for me as well what about you Simon I mean it's also something quite different for you what's the experience been like to do two seasons of Sigala well I think the second season we know our show better, so we're just. We, we're, we're, I think first season for me was really stressful, because because uh, it was our first season. We didn't know exactly what the show was. We didn't know exactly how the public would, would react. So the second season, I guess, we're really a lot more relaxed. Mm -hmm. People will react the way they will. I mean, we, we can't know that, but at least we know that the, our show works. I mean, I, well, it works. I think I think it works. It definitely works. And I feel like with, uh, you know, this, with Simo having directed the show for both seasons, it's just, uh, he's it's just so good at it. He's such, he's such a good director. Like, you come in, he's prepared, he's ready, he captains the team, he's, he takes charge, but, and it creates an amazing atmosphere because everybody feels like they're a part of something fun and something good, you know, and they know the result's going to be great. And he knows the work so well. It's wonderful. And the same thing with, uh, with, uh, with season one. I mean, I think it was all stressful for us in the beginning, but, you know, we all learned so much that we all got a little bit better, you know. And I learned so much from Simon just in terms of writing a show, in terms of what it takes, how to structure it, in terms of acting, you know. So there's just so much I had to learn. It was my first experience, and then he was such a good teacher. It was wonderful. Talk a bit about the language too. It's interesting. Like there's a kind of crudeness and roughness to it, which uh, we, I mean, I'm assuming you wanted to to yeah. to have that there. Well, I, I guess the the you know we're big fans of Curb Your Enthusiasm or you know American shows in general or H HBO. Yeah. They all speak their minds as it comes out, and I think we wanted to just be ourselves, and that that the public can feel it, feel that. The way we're talking on screen is the way we talk in real life. Yeah, and I think we, I mean, I think we might be a little edgy in terms of our language for Quebec and for Canada. I mean, besides maybe Serie Noire, like I think can, uh, pushes that envelope as well. But if you compare it to the rest of the landscape in terms of all the TV shows that are out there, uh, whether you, you're on Netflix, you're on HBO, you're on FX, you know, I think we're, we're a little, I think we're a little milder, you know, than, than, than most of those. We just wanted to keep this, this realism with the TV show that we, we, we feel that really speaks to people. And I feel like that was one of the reasons I feel we connect so much is that we don't filter the way guys really talk when the doors are closed and women aren't around, you know. We filter ourselves a little bit more when they're there, but... When they're not, we're a little more, you know, and we've witnessed that so many times. And a lot of these dialogues come from things we've actually heard or 
or been a part of in terms of discussions. Thanks for doing this, guys. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you.